Hi guys, Tom Mills here, and apparently Hannah wants to be on the camera too. And today we were gonna, I was gonna tell you about our chore system and our privilege system. I've had a lot of people asking about that, and I thought it'd be nice to kind of go through it and uh, show you what we do and what works for us. Okay, so the way we did it is we just have three different privilege levels that they work for. And each one has a different set of requirements, so I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. So this is our privilege chart. It tells. Yeah, <laughs> be quiet, sweet girl. Okay, so this is our privilege chart. It shows the requirements for each level. And our the curriculum we use for uh, our homeschooling is ACE, and so the privilege levels are A is the lowest privilege, C is the next privilege level, and E is the highest privilege level. And that's just been that way. Uh, I used to run a Christian school, and we used ACE, and that's actually a part of their program that they have different privilege levels, and we just continued that in the house when we used it as homeschooling. So the lowest privilege is A privilege, or actually the kids call it that there's an X privilege. There really isn't an X privilege, it's just uh, the kids call it X when they're not on a privilege and so it, it, now it's somehow become X. So we do have it on the list at the top there so you can see what you know privileges they get on X. But <clears throat> And so at the start of every school week we have them apply for each privilege. So if they, for the previous week, if they have met all the requirements for a certain privilege level, then they can go for that, they can get that privilege and then get those benefits that come with it. So each of the three privileges, A, C, and E, has their own benefits. So uh, for instance, uh, with computer, playing time on the computer, that's the biggest thing in our house. Everybody loves to play computer games and video games, and so that's the main thing we regulate. And um, if they're on the A privilege, they can only play the computer on Fridays after 5 p.m. and on the weekends. Uh, well, for X privilege, if they don't, if they're not on a privilege, if they don't make a privilege, they can't play the computer at all for the week. So that this encourages them to, you know, to try to do the requirements for uh, the privilege levels. If they're on, they make C privilege, then they can play the computer anytime after 5 p.m. and on the weekends. So it gives them a little more freedom. And then on uh, e-privilege, if they make e-privilege, they can play the computer in any free time that they have. So if they're, they can do it whenever they'd like. Of course, they still have to finish their school. Um, if they spend all their time playing on the computer, of course, it's free time. But if they spend all the time playing on the computer and don't get their work done, then they're not gonna make the next e-privilege next week or whatever privilege they wanna be on. They still maintain the requirements. So then we have uh, their tablets and their phones, and so each there's each of them have their own little uh, phones and tablets that they game on. None of the phones have service except for Thomas's, uh, but they all just basically use their phones as small tablets. And um, on X privilege, that means no privilege. If they don't make any privilege at all, um, they can have their their phones or tablets uh, Fridays after 5 p.m. And that's it. So. Um, if they make a privilege, they can have it Friday after 5 p.m. and all weekends. If they make C privilege, they can have their phone or the tablet all the time. They can, of course, they still have to finish the requirements and they still have to finish their school. Um, and then on E privilege, it's the same thing. They can just have it whenever they want. And the bedtimes change. So if uh, on E privilege, they go to bed at 9 o'clock. If they make the highest privilege level, they have a bedtime of 9 p.m. Otherwise, all the other privilege levels um, are 8 p.m. And so that just is an encouragement to try to get to that E privilege if they want to stay up a little bit later. And we also have these get out of bed tickets. So they're just little, little tickets that I bought at the... I actually ordered these on Amazon because uh, these are kind of a... a uh, design format that I think Andrea would have picked and she always wanted pretty things. Just give out those little tickets and each ticket if they present it to me um, they can get out of bed for 15 minutes and so this has been in the past it's been like five minutes or they can get out of bed just get a drink of water. Um, I've extended that a little bit. Um, 
ultimately you want your kids to get on these privileges, right? They're helping you. They're maintaining order in the house. It's making things get done. And, and so we want them to make these privileges. So I, have, I want to think of some really good benefits. And so they're allowed, each ticket's worth 15 minutes. And I told them there's no limits. So if they want to save up a whole stack load of tickets and stay up all night long, Justice is currently doing that, uh, then that's great. They can knock themselves out doing that. It's a lot of fun. So they get one ticket, they any tickets if they're not on privilege. If they make A, they get one, one blue ticket, one out of bed ticket for the week. Um, and then C and E, they get two tickets. In addition, E privilege especially, which is something that I want them to strive for. Right now, none of the kids, it's a lot of work to get on E, we'll do the extra school work for one, and uh, most of the kids don't want to do that. So I'm probably going to be adding some extra, extra benefits to it. Um, but last time what we did was I had these orange tickets. And orange tickets, I call them family choice tickets. So you get one family choice ticket a week um, if they make the E privilege level. And that allows them, as a family choice ticket, to decide what we do. So like if I say, hey guys, where are we gonna go out to eat tonight? Um, they can, if you have a family choice ticket, you can say, you can hand it in and you can choose where we go out to eat that night. Or if we're gonna choose which park we're gonna go to, they can choose that or any other choice that maybe is, uh, I decide uh, I want to put up to that. Um, they can make those choices uh, for the family, which is great. They also can use a family choice ticket to get shotgun. Shotguns have become a big thing in our house. It was never a thing before uh, because you know it was me and Andrea at the front. But uh, now that Andrea's not here, the, the passenger seat is open, and so they all want to. They all call shotgun, and it's a huge thing when I say we're going to load a shotgun. And whoever calls shotgun first, I made the rule that they can't call shotgun unless we're actively loading up to the car because we didn't have people calling shotgun the first thing they wake up in the morning or something. So if somebody calls shotgun these uh, orange tickets that can be presented to overwrite that and you can then take the shotgun seat for yourself if you have an orange ticket. Uh, unlike the blue ticket, they expire at the end of the week so you can't stock those up and make, you know, decide what the family does for all eternity. So I started this last year. If they're on e-privilege, they're allowed to take uh, one candy from the candy jar uh, each day. And so that's still something I'm trying to get them to want to strive for e-privilege, uh, but it's not super working either. I need to think of something really good to make them strive for E, which will have them do more work, uh, try to get less demerits, all those types of things. The requirements for each privilege is like this. If they want to be able to get on A privilege, the lowest privilege, uh, besides X, if they want to get on A privilege, they have to have a certain level, certain amount of school done. And uh, it varies for each child, so it depends kind of a lot on how fast that child works, how hard their work is. The little kids tend to do a lot of pages because their pages are more easy and simple. And as you get older and they're working on algebra or something, they have a whole page of algebra problems and math, maybe they'll be doing less pages. And it also varies for how much each child can get done. So it used to be we had, they had to finish so many uh, workbooks uh, a day, uh, a, you know, a month. If they finished two or three a month, I can't remember. They they would allow they would they could do different privilege levels, but that wasn't working well uh, for us because sometimes it takes a long time to finish a workbook, and then it, <clears throat> it it just didn't wasn't something that it was a good fit for us. And so for now, I changed it to pages on average per day that they have to complete. And so at the beginning of each week, they actually set their goals. Their goals is just a chart we have that, that tells them how many pages they're going to do. They actually set their work for the whole week. So they know exactly what pages they're going to do on each day. And so by, by that, I have a little clicker for us. There are these little clicker things that count like people, like at an event or something. They count whatever. And I use, they, they can go by and count their pages. And then they divide by the number of days, the five days, and they can find out their average. And so basically if they maintain that average of pages for the whole week, then they have met the goal for each one. And for instance, for Asher, he's got to have an average of 14 pages in his work done per day for the A privilege. For C, he has to have 15 pages average per day. And for E, he's got to have 16 pages average per day. So and each, one, each child is a little bit different on that. And for the little kids, Sophia and Claudia, they just now started doing actual workbook work, but it's not something still that they're not setting their own goals. Grandma Kitty helps them uh, with that, and they just do what, how much they're going to do. So that's not something they don't participate in those levels. And you just got to adjust these things for 
your own environment. Maybe you don't do homeschooling and maybe you want to use, you want to put something else in there. We basically just thought up these requirements and over time we saw what was too hard to reach, maybe what was too simple, and we just tweaked them uh, accordingly. For us, uh, as homeschoolers, it's really important to get their schoolwork done. So that was one of the main, the main uh, requirements. They also have demerits. So a demerit is just an arbitrary thing. And when I was at, uh, in school, they had your name on the board. And then if you got a check, and then two checks, it was a three checks, I think three checks, you know, you, saw, you got something was bad, note home to mom or something like that, I can't remember. Um, but, and we just have demerits. So you just earn those. And uh, it's important that we say it that way uh, because we don't just punish them. They're earning demerits. Um, in the past, we've had merits that I'm actually going to be doing, possibly bringing that back. They earn little dollars and they can use those to buy things in a store that I stock with things. But for right now, I haven't, I haven't done that. So, uh, so they have demerits. I guess I should show you our demerit board. All right, so this is our demerit board and it keeps track of the amount of demerits each child has. And so if they do something naughty or they break the rules, they get their name. We, we organized by color. So Asher's purple, Judah's orange, Justice or Judah is red, Justice is orange, Eden is yellow, Solomon is green, Sophia is light blue, and Claudia is light purple. Thomas isn't on here um, because he's pretty much done with school and he works most of the time, so he's not really home burning any demerits. So anyway, so this shows what privilege level they're on for the week. We have a very good week this week. Asher's on E, the rest of the kids are on C. And if they, these are the days of the week, I got this little thing at, at Walmart under the, in the office section, and I just lined it with some black masking tape. It's actually green that I colored with a marker. But, and they just mark a little tick there if they get a demerit, if they do something against the rules or do something naughty. And then we can tally those up for the week. And if they don't match to the requirements, then they can't get on that privilege. So in order for them to get on a privilege, they can't have gotten more than 15 demerits. You might actually squeeze these down a little bit. I'm either not being uh, I'm as frequent in giving demerits or uh, they're not being as naughty. Either way, I may change these requirements here in the future. It's been a long time since someone's had 15 demerits in a week, but that's probably more along the lines because I'm not here a lot. Um, the bigger boys can give out, oh, Asher can give out demerits. He had some of the other boys, but it caused some uh, sibling rivalry. Right now, Asher's the oldest who stays home, so he gives out demerits to the little kids. And uh, thankfully, Asher's a really good boy, and uh, he doesn't really earn any demerits. It's pretty uncommon. All the other kids, you know, the older boys can tell me if they think Asher deserved a demerit, and uh, I can give him one when I get home if that happens, but it doesn't, it doesn't happen very frequently. So you can't get more than 15 demerits a week for A privilege. They want to get on the C privilege, um, they can't get more than 10 demerits. If they want to get on the E privilege, they can't have more than five demerits in the week. In addition to the demerit system, we also have a scripture memory verse. And so we've been choosing to memorize the book of Proverbs for quite some time. Proverbs is a book of the Bible that just has a bunch of wisdom in it, and it's really great. And so I thought it'd be good if they eventually someday memorize the whole book of Proverbs. So they have, uh, this is Asher's sheet. He's in Proverbs 18 and uh, it has a little memory verses and we have so many verses a month so Asher has to do 12 verses a month and he has to he just memorizes them and they have to tell them in sequence and they have a whole month to do get that done and the way we do that with the privileges is if they memorize the verses that I give them for the month um, then they can get on privilege if they have if they've done all their verses if they don't do the verses for that month then the next month they have to have said the previous month verses so for example uh, for a and c privilege in order to earn that privilege level they have to have said last month's verses meaning that if they didn't say last month's verses they cannot get either one of those privileges that means they didn't memorize their verses for that month and so um, for the e-privilege level, they have to have said last month's verses and this month's verses. So uh, every month they, get, they have to do 12 more. And it's not all 12. Asher does 12 and it's tweaked. I think Solomon does two. And um, you know, every, it's, a, it's a more of an age thing and an ability thing. So however many privileges, how many verses they can memorize, we put that on there. And so if they get their verses done, they can get each privilege level. 
And in addition, we've had, we have service projects. So um, you've kind of heard, me have heard us talk about service projects on the video sometimes. Um, service projects is just a, a special thing above and beyond the normal chores um, that they have to do. And they usually think something up. For instance, if they see the garden gate isn't closing properly or latching right, uh, they can say, hey, can I fix, they'll ask daddy, I have to approve the service project. Say, dad, can I fix the garden gate for a service project? Then I'll say, sure. And so then they are at their responsibility to then fix that thing. So it's something, uh, not a daily thing, it's something special. Sometimes they'll do, uh, hey dad, can I clean under the, like little girls will say, can I clean under the couch for a service project? Or can I wash the, you know, the top of the refrigerator and take all the bowls off and make sure they're all clean and everything. And, and they'll think of various things to help the family out for a service project. So they have to do one of those per week in order to make the C privilege level. For A privilege, they don't have to do a service project. For the E level service pro uh, privilege, they have to do a service project for us and then one for somebody else. So maybe Grandma Kitty needs some boys to clean her gutters out on her house, or maybe sometimes they'll go by and pick up garbage cans that have blown over for neighbors, or they'll just get a bag and go just pick up trash around the neighborhood, or anything they can do for somebody else, shoveling snow, raking leaves, those types of things can all benefit. Maybe Papa has some work that needs done, or Bethany or Amy, and that way you know, we're helping other people as well. And the final requirement for privilege is reading stories to the little ones. And so that's something we started this year. If they want to get on C privilege, they have to read one story to the little ones. If they want to get on E privilege, they have to read two stories to the little ones. And I was just sad that the little kids don't have as many stories read to them. Now that Andrea's not here, or there's not a mommy around to read stories. Um, and now, using this, they get tons of stories. We have uh, nine kids, and for instance, they all made C well, Hannah's not doing the privilege. Eight kids. They all made C this this week, which means the little kids all got eight stories read to them over the past week. And Asher did too because he was on E privilege. So it's just something fun. And the, the little kids love it. Hannah and Sophie and Claudia, they just gather around and love listening to the stories. And so, and then these may change. I may add these, uh, add things to them or requirements, things that I see that don't get done. I may add something distinct about finishing their chores correctly. Um, our chore system's always been very thorough, uh, but sometimes they don't do their chores to their full benefit. And so there may just be a thing here that they, uh, although maybe I should just transfer that to demerits. That's probably what I'll do. Just give, have demerits given out if they don't do their chores correctly, which that leads us to our chore system. So for chores, we have this chore book. And this chore book has a day, uh, each day on it. So this is Saturday's chores, and each child, again, is organized by color. Hey, Claudia, are you getting lunch? So this is blue, it will be Thomas. This is Asher's chores, these are the lunch chores. These are all the things they have to do for lunch, and these are the main chores that they do after dinner. And I have all the things that the house needs done divided up here, and when they complete them, they just check them off here. These are laminated, I made these in Microsoft Word, and then they just check them off with a, uh, a dry erase and then the next day they turn them over and this is Sunday's chores for tomorrow so they that's how it basically works and so I tried to divide them up to where like Thomas works full-time so after work he has to cycle the laundry and on his day off he has to check the furnace filter and clean and organize Mills Market which I don't know that he's doing that very much I better double check that stuff and those are Asher's chores, and they kind of just go through and they're divided up. Even the little kids have chores. Up just as tidy the living room for lunch. And for Claudia, she has to wash the benches, wash the doors, and help clean the girls' room. So the way these chores work is before they do the chores, they clock in. I have a U-Punch time calculating time clock, and all the kids have their own time cards that they use. So the way the time cards work is they, they punch in and I have stars to help the little ones and the big ones help the little kids clock in. And all they have to do is put this in you know, the right way. It only lets it go one direction. It knows the date and so today is the 30th. So it clocked them in at 12.38. And what they'll do 
is they will then go do all their chores on the list. No. And then after they get done doing all their chores, and we just clock out again. And it calculates the total number of minutes that they worked. 0.2 minutes here. Then we just figure out how much that they've made. We pay them four cents a minute if they're on A privilege, five cents a minute if they're on C privilege, and six cents a minute on the E privilege, which works out to about, oh, $3 an hour for the C privilege level. You might be saying, well, if you pay them per minute, what if they just do their chores really slowly? And that doesn't really bother us. If they want to spend uh, 15 minutes or an hour scrubbing the floor, uh, we're happy to pay them $3. So <laughs> they're not winning if they, they're going to do chores for a really long time. So it's one of those things that uh, it's a good balance for them to learn to how much to work and how hard to work and uh, get a benefit and yet don't want to waste all their time working. So it ends up being a pretty fun lesson that they learn. Several of the chores are, are weekly. So Sunday is bed day. That's the day that they're supposed to clean out their bed really well and make sure everything's made and organized and clean. Um, I think Tuesday is a cleaning day, so they take one room that they take care of on their chores and they scrub it with, you know, uh, either bleach or Windex or they, they scrub something. And so we have some, some of the chores, since it's a whole week book, we can divide up if it's once a week or even once a month sometimes uh, by alternating chores. So it works out pretty good. So this system of privileges and chores we've been using, we've been doing for about 10 years, I think, something like that. And we've tried several other things. We've tried just weekly allowances, saying there are certain chores. And this one is very flexible. It allows us to do uh, daily chores to weekly chores. Uh, it gives the kids uh, incentive for working and for striving to do better and to achieve those different privileges levels. And then a lot of stuff gets done in the house as well. So it works out really, really well. It also has the benefit of regulating the computer time. It's very hard to get on e-privilege where they can play all they want. It almost never happens, um, which I'd like to change that to what's a little more frequently. Uh, but most of the kids are happy with just doing C because they're doing their schoolwork during the day anyways. So. Either way, this is what works for us. Maybe you might want to try some variation. If it sounds interesting to you, leave a comment below. Let us know if you think you might try it out. Uh, it's a lot of fun at our house, and the kids really enjoy it. And that's the money where they get the money that you see us spend. Uh, see them spend on Thursday nights in the videos. They get it from doing their chores for the week. Thanks for watching the video about our privilege and our chore system. I hope we'll see you next time.